um, open forum and introductions. Is there anybody here that would like to speak? Okay. Um, a couple of minutes. Um, it was also distributed, but also in front of you in the gallery. I have reviewed that earlier, and I will make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. A few more minutes taking place. Mark, can you please um, just give us an update on? Yeah, we don't we don't have any uh, March financials for you um, today. We are, the finance committee is meeting with the accountants on May 10th, and. Uh, we got a couple of questions about a few little issues, and hopefully next board meeting we'll have two months to go through. Okay, great. Do you want to give us an update on the financial review? Or is that Kelly? Did you have a that? Yeah, the financial review, we thought we were going to have it here at today's meeting, but um, Fabio is working on it right now. He's our independent um, accountant, and it will it'll be ready on the, on the um, May agenda. So we'll bring it back. Thank you. Um, operations management, Joe? Yeah, just a quick update. Um, we are looking at, um, in preparation for uh, contracts with our vendors, um, Matthew's been doing some research on software for operation software. And so he's been doing some great research on different options that are out there. And um, we're actually talking currently with our current software vendor to see if there's any way we can upgrade our system. Um, he's working on a quote to give us and what that would look like and we're also coming up with some criteria what we would like it to do in relation to streetscape specifically um, looking at some of the pressure washing schedules and things like that that our guys are doing out there and how we can better track that and make sure um, that those services are being delivered as they should be so um, more than likely we feel pretty confident that at our May board meeting we will have a proposal for cost um, that would be for us to upgrade that system and then it will be split between this bid and the sunset bid and one of the great things about we're finding with talking with our existing vendor on this is that because we've had a relationship with them they know kind of the operations of our clean street team and how they work out there and what we would need to do so um matthew and i feel fairly confident we'll, we'll come up with something that will work um that we can use in the bid thank you um you know, we're going to tag team these items, but I'm going to start with a little demonstration of this new uh, program that the city just launched. I went to their uh, press conference and kind of launch of the, the program a few weeks back. So this is the city's attempt to get a better handle on all of the trash that are um, covering the streets of Los Angeles. This program is called uh, Clean Streets LA, and you can access this database at cleanstreetsla.org. Uh, basically, the premise of this program, they had um, street services survey every single street in Los Angeles. So they sent all the, uh, I think it was a, a team of uh, 10 to uh, patrol the streets in, in vans and take photos. And basically, they developed this um, criteria rating system. So they scored each street throughout the city on a scale of one to three, one being clean, two being somewhat clean, and three not clean. And um, you can zoom into different streets. You can type in an address to see um, how, how your street was scored. I'm gonna zoom in here to Hollywood to show you what that looks like. So you can see the bid area is uh, pretty clean. They gave Hollywood Boulevard and kind of this mid block area a uh, rating of two, so somewhat clean. And they uh, they tied in some a uh, number of factors to come up with that score. So it was um, loose litter, weeds, bulky items, illegal dumping. Um, so looks like we've got a pretty good handle on Hollywood and they're gonna use this information to uh, deploy and concentrate resources. So they've made a commitment to add an additional 5,000 trash cans over the next four years. So they're gonna use this system to help guide, uh, you know, the best locations for, for those new resources. And they're going to conduct this survey once every quarter. So that's how they're gonna kind of 
gauge and, and measure their their uh, progress in, uh, in this program. On Red Street, right there. Hudson. Oh, Hudson. Yeah, Hudson. And I, I believe Hudson, you can click on the street and it'll give you the breakdown. So, uh, illegal dumping, they got a, a score of three. So, illegal dumping is an issue on that particular street. Um, I asked the question at the, the presentation how bids kind of play into this. Uh, you know, we're already out there doing this work every day, and they suggested that um, we work directly with the council district because the city will be working with the, the council members to allocate some of these resources so we can let them know uh, the problems that we're having, the issues that we're seeing, so that we can make sure we, we benefit from this program. Otherwise, it's almost like an unfair advantage, you know, where we're already paying for this ourselves, so we still want to get something out of this. So we'll be following this and keeping an eye on it and um, making sure we're, we're involved. Anyone have any questions about this? Again, this is all online, so anyone can check this out. And uh, I will say, uh, so the, their goal is to have um, all the streets that were scored at three, the dirtiest, dirtiest streets, cleaned by 2018. And apparently they did clear a backlog of about 2,000 uh, requests, uh, illegal dumping bulky item pickups in about four months. So they're kind of, you know, charging full steam ahead on this. Okay, so I'm gonna close this out. Um, the next item for Streetscape is uh, uh, a meeting with Bureau of Street Lighting. So out of the Streetscape Committee came a couple of items that we're interested in exploring this year. One was uh, string lights and the other was extending the decorative lights uh, that are on Hollywood Boulevard all the way down to the freeway. Right now they stop at, at Gower. Um, so it was a, a good meeting, Carrie, Carrie and I were there. Um, the existing lights from Gower to the 101 freeway are currently their high voltage lights, so we would have to go in and retrofit all of those lights in order to convert them to uh, the decorative posts. And uh, to do that is, is not cheap, it's about $20,000 a, a light post. That would include a, the new fixture and, and the conversion. Yeah, it's 2024, uh, it's unbelievably expensive. Yeah, yeah, so we're looking at close to $600,000 to upgrade those lights, so obviously that's uh, not attainable for us, but um, the council district is going to keep their eyes open for any funding or uh, potential grants to, to do that work, so. Um, we found out something interesting at this meeting that, as, um, you know, if you look on your property tax bill, it'll say you're part of the street lighting assessment district. And I recall when we were negotiating with Bureau of Street Lighting to get those old five-star lights um, changed out on Hollywood Boulevard, that they kind of said, well, you're, that's part of the street lighting district and there are funds that have accumulated over the years and those funds can be used to upgrade the lights from Gower to about maybe Sycamore or what have you. So I was kind of under the impression that there were like contiguous street lighting districts and, and you know you can pay in and your funds accumulate to a point and then the light and then those funds would be like specifically targeted for the district that your light is located in. And he said that day and I'm not sure, I mean I don't know how knowledgeable he was, is that everything goes into like a general street lighting fund and that replacing those lights from Gower to the freeway is way low on the totem pole for this Conversion. Yeah, they said they have uh, 25,000 light posts that need to be converted throughout the city, and so far they've only been able to convert about a thousand of them. So um, these light posts are on the list somewhere. But um, what's right, that? So you, you say string lighting, are these LED type strings? So yeah, that's kind of a, the separate project. This is just the light posts. Posts. And yeah. Those, those are going to LED also. That's yeah. That's a part of their their retrofit. Yeah. Twenty thousand dollars a pop. Well, and that, that number also includes putting so in that the new the new pole make it look like the ones that are out in front of us now to, um, to make it mm. conform to the same street. Oh, so it's the pole, it's a whole structure the whole from the ground shebang. up. Yeah, yeah. It's the whole, yeah, not just the electrical. It's the it's both. It's yeah, yeah. It's so a, they can just change your electrical light. Well, it's, there's conduit work involved, so they'd have to rip up the sidewalk to. You gotta get cranes and, and a lot of people. It's, it's more work than they think about. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like those re those yeah. ones are labor. The ones from Gower to the freeway? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's one. The gateway. Yeah. The yeah. ones here, 
they were finished in 2005. That's really bad. Mayor Giragosa flipped the switch on them. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Yeah, so working with the council district, we might be able to, I don't know, um, somehow get in line to, to upgrade these posts. We're not sure how that would work, but. He also acknowledged that that is a hodgepodge of five completely different light poles from Gower to the 101 freeway. Are we going back to what? There's like the super old ones, and then there's the super new ones, and there's the, it's like a, it's like a light pole graveyard there. <laughs> Yep, and then so the, the string lights was the, the other item that we talked to them about. Um, we are thinking about doing some string lighting on three blocks, and there's a, a little map in your, your packet. Uh, we're looking at Cosmo, Ivar, and Coenga, all south of Hollywood Boulevard and north of Selma. For various reasons, um, pedestrian foot traffic, um, just kind of the aesthetics of the street. Uh, there's also, you know, some, some issues with crime happening in, uh, in Cosmo in that alley, so, you know, tackle it with some, some lighting at night. Um, I was kind of relieved to hear that they have an official program for string lighting through the city's uh, Bureau Street Lighting Department, so um, hopefully we can work within that program to, to get something like this going. Uh, there's also a photo there of what we were thinking. Those are some string lights on Main Street in, in Santa Monica, so, um, we're also hoping the city can provide a list of vendors who have done this work um, in the city already. So uh, we, we are working away at that as well. Okay, uh, Alyssa, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, so the next handout is the Hollywood Boulevard Missing Crosswalk. And the bid submitted a request through Council District 13 to have seven crosswalks painted on side streets that intersect Hollywood Boulevard to promote pedestrian safety. Um, we've received approval from the Department of Transportation who will implement and pay for the new crosswalk installation. And we don't have a timeline yet, so you can see where the red is. Those will be the new crosswalks. Yeah, and I, I believe um, one of, I think the McCadden intersection, they are actually converting that to a stoplight. Um, so that'll be a crosswalk and a, a new stoplight. Okay. Next up, we have Great Streets Initiative Phase 2. Uh, bid staff will be meeting with the Great Streets team for a walkthrough on April 25th, and at that time, they'll identify projects, opportunities to be completed by the Bureau of Street Services, and these will include filling tree wells with decomposed granite, addressing sidewalk trip hazards, and repairing light posts. Do you need Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, I skipped the first item. So um, this, we're actually not going to be seeking a, a, an action um, until next month. But uh, I just wanted to give you an update on the audit that we're planning to do for our maintenance contract. We've developed a, a draft list of criteria that we're going to be measuring. Uh, we're just waiting to get um, some information from our vendor, like a thorough schedule of when all of our services are supposed to be completed so that we can actually head out into the field and you know check and make sure everything's being done when they're supposed to be uh, done so um, once we have that audit completed I think we would be more comfortable in um, uh, revisiting the CPI increase uh, at the next month's board meeting. Do you want to have the audit completed or just have a process underway to do it? Oh, we've got the, the draft of the of the audit ready to go. So depending on how long it takes for them to give us this information, um, whether or not it's enough time to complete uh, or not, but yeah. Okay, and our next meeting will be here at 8 a.m. on Wednesday, April 28th, and there will be a presentation and demonstration of potential operation software. So this was the software that Joe was, was mentioning. They're gonna come in and show us how what that looks like and how it'll work. So we'll be running all of that through the Streetscape Committee. If there's no questions, and we'll turn it over to uh, Devin. Yeah, so uh, actually Leslie's gonna report, uh, but I just wanted to tee it up a little bit to kind of explain who these players that we're talking about are. So um, the first, um, people you'll hear about is 
lag, wide angle group, so they're an events production group. Um, they do a lot of different events, and one of them that I just wanted to call to your attention is this one called Beer Fest that they do, because um, it's similar to what they're proposing for us, but this is a separate one that they've produced on their own. Um, so this kind of this is an actual photo from the event. Um, so that's the crowd that they that they brought in for the um, craft beer tasting. Was that Philadelphia? I believe so. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, they've done that in Seattle, Washington D.C., Portland, Philadelphia, New York, and Chicago so far. Um, but for our purposes, they are being hired by a company called IMG to produce this tapped beer festival. So just a little bit on IMG. They're um, a global leader in sports, events, media, and fashion. They're a really big company. So they've hired uh, WAG to do these tapped beer festivals around the country also. And just to show you, this is uh, the tapped beer festival website. Um, so right now they're doing one uh, coming soon in Oklahoma City. And then they also have a lot of other cities that they're doing in the future. So these are the um, events that they put on. IMG basically hires WAG to put this on. So they have asked them to do one here in LA. That's how we got introduced to them um, through a connection with our PR firm. And um, just to add a little bit more to it, when we went to the IDA conference last year, I went to an events panel. They were talking about how craft beer festivals are the, are the big thing now to draw crowds into your district. So I actually previously emailed Brian at the Blue Palms and asked him if he wanted to collaborate on an Only in Hollywood Craft Beer Festival, which that didn't go anywhere, but so this would be kind of a great way to incorporate that into the Only in Hollywood Festival. So it's something I had already kind of been working on before uh, we were introduced to WAG. So I just wanted to let you know who these um, two different players are so that when Leslie updates you, you'll know who she's talking about. <laughs> I continue to be a little bit confused, though, about how WAG and um, IMG are related to each other. And anyway, they came and met with us, uh, the WAG people, uh, and um, they're impressive. I mean, they know what they're doing. They seem to know what they're doing, and they're very curious about uh, Hollywood and have some good ideas. And you know, obviously this would be part of our music and arts festival and bring another element to it. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think that it, I'm, I'm now I'm going from just my experience of it rather than the notes because you seem to have covered it. <laughs> but um, what's, what's a little unclear to me but um, is how much they would actually plan our music festival, our music and arts festival. Uh, and, and we're still we're still a little unclear about yeah. that as well. Yeah. And uh, so that's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, but they seem uh, they're interested, and uh, I guess we're interested too. Um, as as one of the things about this is that they can do this on their own without us. They can just come and rent a parking lot, uh, and there is a parking lot now in question. There it is. Is that, is that, oh, is that it? No, that's not enough. No. Are you, it, um, do they come in and, and do a beer fest by themselves or do a music festival? Beer fest, beer fest, okay. yeah. 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 Um, the but, Urban Outfitters lot. Yeah. And I, I are, yeah. So, I mean, I think Leslie's point is that, you know, we, um, we have, we are, we are in this like, you know, conversation with them. They've been out a couple times, walk the area, talk to the parking lot owner. Um, understand what it is that we're trying to do, which is to leverage a relationship with the marketing dollars, the ability to bring people into Hollywood, and then we can build around that. They would have a ticketed uh, experience, but around that, using our other venues that we have been able to um, bring into this last year, uh, create a wider experience for people in Hollywood over a three-day period. So you might go to the craft beer festival, one day and then the next day you come back and you're going to pop-up art galleries and um, you know the different music venues it, we're trying to build this experience and um, our you know we are uh, 
we are not entering into any kind of, we're not paying them to do this. We want, we want them to stay close to us though so that we can protect the neighborhood. And they seem to get that. We want, we want an experience here that is actually gonna be um, a win-win for everybody. And in our, in our steering committee meetings, which you know we've got all our partners coming here, we've been keeping everybody informed about this. And someone's like, yeah, this, this has potential. This has potential. I have a question because this is something that to me was a whole different perspective to what I was thinking. I don't think we should pay them. I was wondering what they're going to pay us. Or well, I was just going to bring that up because I, yeah. I think actually um, they're piggybacking on our music and arts festival. And the thing that makes, I know the thing that makes money in these music festivals is the booze. So it's like they're getting a platform to make all the money. We're not gonna, we don't make money from the music and arts festival, but I think it could be a source of income for us. And I think we you know, need to negotiate it if we do decide to go forward with them. Um, so the minimum they do the beer fest and but they may actually theoretically could take over managing or helping to promote the. <coughs> well, but they're doing it for profit, right? For themselves? Sure. IMG yeah. doesn't do anything. And so that's the, the, you know, I crafted a motion, you know, just trying to, I want to, I want to be able to keep um, representing our community in conversations with these folks. So I just want, you know, we want to be completely upfront with the board that we're in these conversations and what can I, um, what can I do? So I crafted a motion that said, in consultation with the steering committee, you know, which was he's on, Michael's on, you know, to the extent that he can listen in, David and Jose, Amoeba Records, <coughs> Palladium, LA Film School. We have a steering committee of all of the kind of main players in this um, uh, neighborhood experience we're putting on that would want the ability to consummate some type of memorandum of understanding with WAG and IMG to produce a festival subject to no expenses incurred by HPOA. But implicit in that, and Leslie has been in at least one of the meetings we've had with them, that there would be some yeah. remuneration back that would help cover some of our expenses and you know begin to um, build the foundation for what ultimately can become a perhaps a separate um, non-profit or a separate um, festival management effort here in Hollywood. So we're learning as we're going. And as I mentioned, you know, last year with, on a minimal budget, we, we managed to eke out $9,000 at the end. And that became the seed money in a separate account we're creating. And um, this year we are searching for sponsors on, on our own thing. Whether or not the beer festival happens, we'll still put something on, it'll, it'll still be small. But we have this ability to possibly partner with someone who can bring marketing uh, dollars into the neighborhood, who can really promote it, and they're willing to co-brand with us. So I invite anyone with a business mind to be involved with us as we negotiate this relationship. Has IMG been in whatever meetings that you've had, or just WAG? What? what? And, and where is IMG coming from? I am, WAG is going back to IMG and uh, going to present them a proposal. We, they met with the parking lot owner last week, so they're trying to come up, I guess, with the parameters of what it's going to cost um, for, uh, what would IMG have to pay them or what have you? Well, IMG is owned by William Morris. If this is the same IMG. Yeah, yeah. it is. That, and they do events Everywhere. all over the country of every kind. IMG started uh, in the 60s representing uh, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, and Gary Player. So they, they, they know their stuff and they do college athletics, they do everything. So, but, it, but WAG is a client of IMG. Who's doing this? IMG is, would be the client of WAG, if I understand it. WAG is the, product, the event production it should be the, the other be, way around. I would think it would be the other way around. But. So maybe it's going to. I mean, IMG is looking for a place to put this tap beer right. vessel. They were looking at the Grove, okay? And they were talking to the Grove about putting it on the rooftop at the Grove parking lot. And um, our PR team, who has a relationship with Rick Bruce on that group, said, oh, instead of the parking lot at the Grove, <laughs> which is kind of like, you know, an inauthentic place. Um, how about bringing it into Hollywood, you know, right into this neighborhood? So they came and saw 
And initially they wanted to do it on the parking lot at the LA Film School. And so we brought LA Film School in and they said, you know, we can't give you our, our rooftop parking lot. We're, right. we're, in, we're in class. But we all said, but what about that parking lot behind Urban Outfitters, which was kind of the epicenter last year of the festival. And they're like, oh yeah, that's very interesting. So we set them up with Gil Zahavi owns the parking lot. He said, Jamal has the lease on it. We talked to Jamal, Jamal met with them. I talked to Jamal today, they were, he said it was, they were clearly out there today measuring and looking. And so the way it was described to me is that they have to go back to IMG with a proposal on what it would take to pull this off in Hollywood. And then they'll come back to us. So like moving a pawn across a chessboard. <coughs> at very least you would probably learn a lot from yeah, no, those yeah, players, right? Really so it doesn't hurt to continue with that one. I, I know that the motion is not before us, uh, but there's two things that I would like added to the the motion if it is brought forward to us. And one is is on the um, says in consultation with the OAH uh, steering committee, authorized staff to proceed with consummating MOU with WAG IMG to produce festival subject to. I would add the words at the minimum, no expenses incurred mm -hmm. by the HPOA. I would like added as well with appropriate protective liability measures in place. Okay. Because then that covers, Monica brought up, you know, is there a way to make some money? So we're saying at the minimum, there's no expenses incurred, thereby telling you, you know, get what you can. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my question is, because this is on private property, they would do it no matter what. Right. So I think we almost are thinking through that we have an opportunity versus, you know, them doing it. Um, because what would be different than like the main festival? We've got the street. Right. right? So We're hoping that they could, to somebody's point, put some money into our coffers mm -hmm. to help us, you know, with our with our costs as well. So we are looking to um, activate some of these venues last year. We're looking for sponsors. This would be an example of uh, Record Parlor, the Americana Lounge. Um, I think you might have gone in there with us last year. Had three days of like every hour bands playing, but everybody played for free and they underwrote the entire cost of that. As a neighbor, everyone kind of like did their neighborly thing last year to get this thing going. But we're looking at, you know, maybe trying to get sponsorships of up to $10,000 for these venues to pay for their lights and their sound and their talent. And lighting up front to say, there's something going on inside this venue. Last year, you know, there was no signage. There was, you know, you're walking around like, where do we go next? Um, so, you know, that is, is our dollars that we can raise to help underwrite our costs. String lights, you know, any of the number of thing, number of things that would help make this neighborhood look more special over the course of the festival. So yes, I would like to bring in revenue. And I think they already sense that our, what we bring to the party is um, neighborhood connections. So we already went over today and met with Sound Factory, who's right across the street, uh, would be landlocked, just like they are with the farmer's market, and talk to them about, you know, how would you guys feel if there was a, a, a stage out on the the Urban Outfitters lot, you know, we'll talk to Triangle Square, we'll talk to the apartments. We have relationships with the neighborhood and we have relationships with the city and that's worth a lot if you're coming in to try to do a festival in a neighborhood. So I think they get that. Especially with all those apartments. Yeah. Triangle Square, Yeah. they have had some issues before with noise and, um, and in the Larry Bond project, and there's a lot of residential units right there across a very small island. Yeah. You know, this raises the question of whether an, anybody can kind of piggyback on our music and arts festival. I mean, yeah, they can theoretically do it themselves by just taking over a parking lot, but it seems to me in the end, we want to have control over who mm -hmm. participates. Oh, yeah. And and and, a, and then and another point back to the money issue. I know in the movie theater business, the movies are like a, a popcorn delivery system. Mm -hmm. They make all the money off the popcorn. And, and music festivals are an, a beer delivery system. So 
I'm just repeating myself mm -hmm. that this is really good for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, you know, we have been talking, and Michael, you know, I credit Michael for having this vision of something that could really become a destination in Hollywood in the, in the long run. Uh, and we all, I think, sense that there's great potential that if done right and grown appropriately, this festival could become, become something that really is, is fills the hotels in Hollywood and people, I mean, you're going to Coachella tomorrow, right? Not yeah. that we're going to turn into that, but, and all of these um, established festivals had to start small and they had to build track record and they had to learn by doing. And they already sensed the potential of what this could become over time, where you're, you're you know, closing down streets and you've got, you've got stages in the street and you've got booths and you've got vendors and you've got food and you know our property owners up here on Hollywood Boulevard want to see the action come up to Hollywood and it, it can grow um, if, if we have the right partnership and mm -hmm. Leslie you know and I appreciate the business minds you know and these meetings David and Jose have been putting on a festival in Michigan as well is that you know this is a one-year relationship to start and then if it's um, something that we feel good about them we can try to scope out a longer vision um, to build this over time if they're the right partner so i kind of feel like this is what we've been waiting for we've been waiting for someone to come along and help us lift this and um and so far we've had a good feeling about them but i welcome anybody to come in to our next discussion yeah. and hear just a clarification um i think we don't have an action on the table but you want to um, consummate an mou which is a non-binding MOU because after you're negotiating the, the initial understanding, then you're going to come back with an actual agreement. Yeah. This is totally non-binding. Right. This is you, you know, saying continue what you're doing, continue talking to these people, continue. You know, commitment until we have to have a signed agreement. Yes, exactly. But just to be clear, the, it's really about the beer festival itself. If we're talking about a music festival, bringing in a group that can help us produce that, there are a lot of big players who would be willing to engage, and we've spoken to a couple of them. Um, and that would, I think, address the, the vision, the real branding opportunity for Hollywood, potentially bring in big money for the community that could go back to other uses of its food and food or whatever. So I think there's plenty of players out there, but those far folks aren't ready to engage, at least not on this schedule. Yeah. Not a, those are big players in right. like a year and a half to get going. Mm -hmm. So this group, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to confuse a beer festival, which anyone can put in up in a, a week, mm -hmm. right. with a music festival. They're mm -hmm. part of this. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't give a control for next year to these guys when they're, we are not to the really good players. And they're just one. It's a discrete possibility. portion. But yeah. I think your idea originally was how do we brand Hollywood? And exactly. we thought the music was here and everything else. Exactly. They've already so discussed the Hollywood. growth. This is something that they're doing throughout the country and right. they're replicating a formula to be, they just need real estate to do it. Mm -hmm. So that really doesn't give Hollywood identity. It just says, here's a place for this. So I think this is also going in a, a direction opposite of what their intention was. But, but, right. but, it's good, but it's not good. Well, yeah, but for the current plan, which is to keep kind of baby steps and learning and making sure we can actually manage this process and have these, this group come in, if they can be helpful financially or mm -hmm. in terms of activating, it's fine. I just don't, right. I, I, I'm throwing out there, I just want to confuse this group with some of the players that can be incredibly helpful to put together ABC Capital Record, bring in major performers, and really do something that could only be done in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to say that one of the ideas we have this year, Michael, because um, we're, uh, we feel like we've got those people even in our neighborhood. We've got Netflix, and we've got Viacom, and we've got Fender moving in, um, in, in our ABC friends, would be to have some kind of a VIP experience, maybe on Saturday night at the festival, where we take these people around and show them, this is what it looks like at night. Look at all these people here. Look at the lights. Look at the vitality. Do you want to be a part of this in the future? So, and have like- Following up to what we discussed at the chamber. Mm -hmm. Which one was the chamber? We talked about, uh, at least in one of the committees, I think I think we were there, we talked about welcoming our new neighbors who are moving in. Oh. So is anyone talking to buy a house? Oh, yeah, welcoming yeah. them. Yeah. And this is exactly that type of, of eye-opening that's great to be with them.
Uh, I'd like to move us forward and then we can have further discussion if needed. Can I, may I put a motion before us? Yeah. And then make a friendly amendment if you need to we get ready. Uh, I'm help you. In consultation with OIH Steering Committee, authorized staff to proceed with consummating non binding MOU with WAG slash IMG to produce Craft Beer Festival subject to comma at the minimum comma no expenses incurred by HPOA with appropriate uh, protective liability measures in place. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Is there a second or an amendment to the motion? Did you really I just had a question. I have two questions actually. Are they going to have music at the beer fest? Mm -hmm. And then are they also going to, are their hours going to be the same as, like when do they stop? Because to, the only thing I would think about with a beer fest is I don't think people leave beer fest, mm -hmm. especially you can't walk with your alcohol. You're going to stay there, especially if your music goes. So I yeah, just, we were talking about the hours and talking about ending at 10 or 11, but recognizing that it is a neighborhood. So that would, it would be over. It'd be Friday night and Saturday night at this point, <coughs> and so it would empty out. Okay, sounds like yeah, other businesses right. get. It might be other venues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it in and out, or is it? Uh, you know, you could, it's, it's just for a span. For a span. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, you haven't even gotten that far yet. Yeah, but if you're in the gates, you're 21, and you're, you know, you've paid to get in there. So it is a paid event. Right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Any more discussion? Or any more discussion? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I need to ask again. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And any abstentions? <coughs> Is there anybody who would like to be part of our next meeting with them? Because uh, Wesley might be going back to New York. Uh, when's the next meeting? Well, I, I suspect it might be as early as next week. Well, I'll be here. Okay. <clears throat> but it would be nice to have other people there. Because <laughs> it's kind of. Why don't you come, Michael? Well, I can't. Well, well, I can't really address you and your comments if that's all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do have. We've got, um, you know, other. other uh, Amoeba, Ellie Film School, okay. David and Jose. We've got yeah. some other people in the neighborhood who can help us. Okay. <laughs> Um, we didn't talk about oh. anything else we did oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so we had another uh, something else happening, which is we took a, a tour on Hollywood with uh, the representative from the Jimmy Kimmel show. His name is last name is Julia, I don't want to call him Dean, but what's his first name? Doug. 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 Um, and um, we went to, um, gosh, we went to the records, we went to Fondo, we went to, um, uh, um, Avalon, we went to a lot of smaller uh, spaces where the recording studios and a wonderful um, uh, little complex with the uh, base 1520. Yeah, mm -hmm. so nice. Right in the middle of the day. <laughs> and it was an eye opener for me because I come here and I go to the theater and, and it's there's lots of great stuff happening. I recommend that if we have another one of these that you to come because it's uh it's it was really great it was really inspiring there's all kinds of stuff going on that we don't know about um so uh he was uh, interested in mostly apparently the smaller venues mm -hmm. um to do uh musical shows off their set um which would be nice exposure for us and um interesting for them so it was fun and he's a, he's a yeah, just to he's add a to that a little bit, he uh, after we showed him the venues, he requested um, that we create like a one sheet for some of the smaller venues, and then he wanted his production team to come back out with us to scope the venues. So I put these together. Um, these are some of the venues that were involved last year, and so along with that, we're also trying to get sponsors for these venues. I think that was one of the other important things about LAG that we our ears perked up because they work with a lot of different companies that want to sponsor things like this. 
So each of these little venues could have a sponsor that would pay, you know, between five and 10 or 20 grand, depending on the scope of the events, um, to sponsor these smaller venues to activate them. Uh, like Carrie said, Americana Lounge did their own thing last year. Um, they have all their own equipment and they booked all their own bands, but it would still be very helpful. They could bring in a higher, you know, caliber of bands if they had a sponsor. Um, Amoeba Music obviously can do their own thing, but we kind of put this in for uh, Jimmy Kimmel to see that they do have a stage. They do have huge events. They like to sell a McCartney fashion show. Um, and it's a great venue, authentic to Hollywood. Um, Bardo at Avalon is another option where they could uh, rent it out and take over it with a sponsor. Uh, we just toured the Ivar Theater today, which has both the theater and the brick room in the back, which are both pretty much the same size, 1,700 square feet back here, 1,900 square feet here. Um, so that would actually be a great uh, place for a sponsor to activate. They could do both areas if they wanted. Um, St. Felix is a little bit smaller, but they have like four unique areas. So for smaller acoustic or like brand activations, it would be great. Um, and then Space 1520, the courtyard, they're already planning and opening an event on their own, and they do great events there. This was, actually I was here, somewhere back here. <laughs> that was Saturday, um, Amoeba had an after party for Record Store Day, and it was a free event. Um, so that's the kind of thing that they already put on there. So, um, where Camila is actually looking for sponsors for this, but like I said, WAG also could possibly hook us up with sponsors, and then that's a way for us to help and activate these smaller venues kind of around the hub of the, the beer garden or, or whatever would happen there. Yeah, and I just want to say it was really great taking Doug around. And I again, I have to thank Michael for um, helping connect us with the ABC folks. Um, we kind of said to Doug, you know, Jimmy Kimmel focuses all of his energy on the block in front of Hollywood and Highland. And if you look at the demographic that he's really reaching out to, nobody is going to that block. That's the tourism block. And like, if you're thinking about his demographic it's kind of more down here and Doug was like he's like thank you for making me do this thank you for dragging me out of the office he goes this reminds me of Brooklyn he was blown away by what Selma is looking like now and his his mind was really turning about you know either doing remote broadcasts where you know they do music at night and they usually use their stage in the back of the parking lot there he goes we could do a remote from one of these places or even um, he has an idea of a comedy fest so he was like multiple times, thank you for dragging me out of my office to see this. He had no idea that this existed. But this is specific venues for the music fest? For any, we wanted Doug to see anything. Because remember, we go all the way up to the north. Yeah. <laughs> as well as, yeah, no, so no, no, I, we I know show, it's a wide spectrum. We so can show him more. It was just trying yeah. to get him, like I said, out of the office and just, Good. Raymond Young was like trying to catch a fish because even he's on the phone the whole time, right? Right, Leslie? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but smart. Mm -hmm. And he kind of gets it. He gets the whole Hollywood thing and how it's changing and um, very perceptive of that. Do you want to um, record the many music days? Yeah, um, we are. We have a meeting on Tuesday morning with the W, um, the management and marketing staff at the W Hotel, to talk about activating the front plaza there for a Make Music Day Hollywood. Although it would be actually Make Music Day LA at this point. I think you have to, there's some costs incurred if you want to make your own subdivision of the Make Music. Um, but it's something that happens all around the world. So um, we're gonna initially first talk to them. We've kind of got Metro's blessing to move forward since it's technically Metro property. And then we also have interest from MI. We're gonna meet with them after we talk to the W about the MI kind of helping to program some entertainment there, whether it's their students performing or um, you know whatever they would want to do with us. But we, the W also has um, performers that they might wanna book for that. Um, so then we would need to find a sponsor to pay for those performers and any costs associated with setting up a little sound system. Uh, it, it would be minimal, it wouldn't be anything too loud. Um, we wouldn't want a crowd to form, it's kind of just something to put music in the air and kind of make the atmosphere pleasant there in front of the subway stop. And then it also would you know, give us a platform to promote the, the festival and, and our efforts with the bid. It's June 21st. Yeah, maybe it's me. I didn't write any talking points.
So we have this group meeting. We're not allowed to say the other word we used to use um, for this neighborhood that we're in right now. We're kind of looking at historic Hollywood Boulevard corridor, what have you. It's Mark, it's uh, Gallo, it's Beth from World of Wonder, and it is um, uh, Evan Kaiser, yes. And we're going to expand the group as well. They've got some great ideas. Um, we are, um, we're working with Haynes & Co. to come up with a new name for this part of Hollywood. We've hired someone to do some research and she is finding some amazing insights into how historical, this is, almost seems to be the, the, the birthplace of old Hollywood. Uh, again, this area would go from Cahuenga to Las Palmas and some of the oldest buildings are actually located here and we're already envisioning what a cool historic walking tour you could do of this area, like look beyond the stripper store here because what really happened here, um, and even Evan's got some great stories about how this building and the people in this building interacted with Musso and Franks. Um, we also met with David and Jose, we're working on a case study of the Cahuenga Corridor as kind of like, what do you do if you have a vision for an area that has been rather moribund, and if you stick to that vision, cool things can happen. So Joe and I are working on putting together you know, before and after photos and telling their story, or they would tell the story, and would invite in the property and business owners in this section to hear how that <coughs> happened on Cahuenga. You know, you, you, we can make that happen here as well. Um, so it's really, it's super exciting to be We're working with this group. <clears throat> the challenge that we were having with this kind of midsection here is what is our identity? And you know, you look around, there really is no identity. You got bong shops and you got lingerie shops. What's the identity? And so for and I forget April. April. To to really come and discover some of the historical aspects of this of this midsection here. Um it just clicked. That's what, that's our identity. And and now we can really run with it and and brand it as as our identity bring in some of these local property owners who can hear the success stories of David and Jose over on Quick Corridor and really get property owners to see if you reconceptualize your, your property, it might actually be profitable, more profitable than what it is right now. And so I think this is the start of a really exciting time for this historic corridor here. Yeah, to kind of add to that, April, um, she actually started out uh, researching our historic theaters here in Hollywood, of which we have a ton. Um, probably a bigger concentration of theaters here in Hollywood than anywhere else. Um, a lot of them you wouldn't even know used to be theaters. I'll pass this photo around. Um, she found this this uh, theater it was one of the first uh, theaters to feature some level of automation. Um, like pre pre purchasing tickets and putting it in the machine, and it had one of the very first vending machines, which really freaked people out because they had never encountered a vending machine where you put money in and get, get a soda back. Um, so, this building is still there, it's on the northeast corner of Hollywood and Hudson. Um, this space was most recently a Scientology bookstore, and it's currently vacant. Um, so, you wouldn't know from looking at it today that it was once the world's most unique theater, um, but that's the type of thing that she's uncovering for us. A lot of these hidden hidden gems and, and even new theaters like the Dolby and renovated theaters like El Capitan, there's a lot that we have here that we can kind of shine a light on. So we want to bring these property owners together, let them know like kind of what they're sitting on, possibilities of what they could do with them and then um, perhaps do some sort of a media tour to kind of show off all these theaters that we have here. Um, and even ones that are now gone, but we can tell the story about how they used to be here. Um, obviously some of the first movie theaters ever were right here in Hollywood, and some of them were right here in this historic corridor too. Yeah, pretty exciting. We're very excited about this stuff, really fun. Yeah, uh, Matthew and I had a meeting with the intern um, that we've hired to help us program the windows. This is kind of just an early sketch, a jumping off point where we kind of talked to him and we had Claire on the phone. So we kind of come up, came up with this idea to have these cubes, um, different colored cubes from our color palette. 
And then we talked about different ideas that we could put on the cubes. We can put uh, photos on them, we can put messaging on them. We even talked about cutting out a space in them and having our um, pads behind them showing video. Um, or putting the, the globe lights within cubes and having like a cut out of a pattern with light coming out of it. Um, so then we can always program those differently. Like if the um, you know Sunset and Dine is coming up, we can make it about the restaurants here in Hollywood. But the music festival, we can make it about the music venues and the different businesses that feature music here in Hollywood. Um, so the idea is to kind of create a template where we can constantly switch it out, update it, add new things. We could place things like little um, like sculptures or renderings of um, actual developments or buildings in the area. And then kind of the new component that came out of our recent meeting was to kind of make it be like an abstract representation of Hollywood. So there'd be kind of like a street and then the, the, the cubes would be the buildings. It would be abstract, it wouldn't be like a literal representation. Um, but it's just kind of an idea to build it off of. And then to have the, the background, um, the walls just have like kind of an art deco wallpaper pattern, possibly like even a pattern that's found somewhere here in Hollywood. There's a lot of different patterns on our historic uh, buildings and things like the, um, the Egyptian theater has like a metal grill that has a pattern. So kind of looking at those patterns and seeing what we can find. Um, but that's an easy way to kind of put something on the wall that we could then remove later if we wanted to change it out. So we have a deadline of June 1st, that's when we'd like the first um, display to be finished by. So we're looking forward to having that for you guys to see and we'll update you on the progress as it moves along. Um, as we heard in action on the table, for those of you who were here last month, um, Vincent sent me a thing and actually gave us a really great presentation. Um, and that, do we actually have that for the board to use that? So the, I kind of condensed the text from the PowerPoint onto this blue sheet of paper. So I, I think the impact of the presentation. Is, is I have, we have the PowerPoint, okay. yeah. Great. So for those of you who haven't, I mean, you know, take a look at it. But it actually had milestones of what they've accomplished in the last year, and also their vision for the next year. Because you know, working with the committee, you know, is really focused on what you want to achieve. So there's a motion on the table to review this contract. Oh, based upon the terms of this Okay. I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, security. Security, you want to give us a on the yeah, state board enforcement initiative? We did not meet. Um, the committee did not meet. But we do have a, um, a working group with the council office and um, city attorney uh, uh, looking to take advantage of the ACE, the Administrative Code Enforcement Program, to um, uh, enforce on the um, prohibition on skateboarding on the sidewalk, and particularly the Walk of Fame. So we um, are in the process of researching, or, or uh, council staff is researching uh, the cost of the signs, which will uh, need to be posted fairly frequently so that there is no, um, no one can say I didn't know that it was illegal to skateboard on the Walk of Fame. Uh, I think Matthew has a meeting on Monday. We're going to go out with the city attorney to look at how many signs per block do we need, and obviously we need them on both sides coming from both directions. And um, the, uh, the goal is to try to have this up and coming by the summer. We, we might be asked to help pay for those signs, um, and the chamber might be asked as well through the historic trust. Uh, so we'll you know, maybe know more by next month on whether or not we would be asked to contribute the signs. We're talking about probably probably needing at least 100 signs out there. Was, was that what the number we ended up with? I think we're hoping for a little less than that, but yeah. Because a lot of change, co 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 it covers, you know, <clears throat> not quite, it covers almost eight tenths of a mile and then you've got all of Vine Street as well from Yucca to Sunset. And it's really sad when you look at the brand new terrazzo that was just unveiled in front of Equinox, brand new, and it's already all skidded up with black, you know, skateboard marks. And, um, you know, people are out there jumping around, putting their, their 
acrobatics and the skateboards are just slamming down on that terrazzo. And, and plus, it's just dangerous to be, you know, on the other end of a hurling skateboard for you. So hopefully um, next month, if we need to help pay for those skateboards, we'll have yes. some on. <laughs> we'll bring that back, but we're making progress. And then, uh, Oh, yeah, so there's, a, there's a letter in your packet, it's yellow. Mm -hmm. You're very emotional by, by much to, to charge various <coughs> departments in the city of LA to report back on recommendations and pol uh, policies and procedures. It can be adopted to address the, the public safety, um, specifically from Highland to Orange. Some of you guys saw Gary Silver walk in today. When you were walking in, he was the gentleman who was here with the dog moves. The Wax Museum building, uh, just it's actually just east of Highland, but he was complaining that you know the there's a group of thugs out front that basically on a daily basis that are intimidating his tenant, which is still out of the theater, um, students that go there, the, the uh, you know, they're just sort of bad operators. They're, you know, they're, they're thugs, and there's a lot of them. See these the slingers and some of the other people that we've historically had problems with. Um, and so Mitch is, Mitch has always been aware of it, but he's trying to get some policy recommendations to, to develop the, some legislative measures that might help us address this long time and recurring issues. Yeah, so he had a hearing this week at the Public Safety Committee and um, the uh, uh, LAPD, LAFD, uh, Bureau of Security Services, and LA Tourism all gave reports looking back historically on the number of arrests that have occurred, and, and particularly he's looking at from Highland to Orange, a uh, disparate number of arrests. And uh, what was very interesting was a, it's actually up on um, the council file. He, I, I, I printed it out, but it's on the Xerox machine. LA Tourism did a report on the um, survey they did in 2013. 40% of the uh, visitors to the Hollywood and Highland area are from out of the country, which kind of underscores why we have a hard time getting any prosecutions of some of the behaviors out there because they go back to China or Italy or Japan and you, you can't, you're not available to be a witness in any kind of a, of a proceeding. And um, uh, universally felt uncomfortable as they were approached and harassed and asked for money because there is a uh, kind of a, a knowledge that these people are coming in from out of the country, they don't speak the language, and they are preyed upon. So, you know, general agreement at the uh, Public Safety Committee that it's an embarrassment to Los Angeles to not be able to protect the tourist experience in that area. So the city attorney now is being tasked with coming back in 30 days with some recommendations on what could be done within the context of First Amendment rights, et cetera, but something unique and different than what's happening out there right now. So we'll see what can happen. Yeah, and there was no security committee meeting this month. Um, we will have it on the 11th of May, 10 o'clock in this room. Anybody wants to attend? That's all we got. Just out of curiosity, who, who would remember what council member second did? <laughs> that looks like a Tom LaVange, actually, because this motion was adopted in 2015, and what happened this week was an actual report that um, of the different departments looking uh, retrospectively at the data that they could um, share to underscore why this was needed. So, yeah, that looks like Tom's signature. Okay, um, new business. Yeah, so um, uh, been getting suggestions on some of the things that we could be doing this year to help inform the board about, um, you know, our priorities for the coming year and also beginning to think about bid renewal and some of the things that are on the horizon. So it was recommended that um, for those who are interested, to do a um, 
revise or revisit of the midnight walk that I think we did in 2013. Uh, Leslie in particular is ready to do this again. <laughs> and I think what we would find is that things have improved considerably uh, compared to that time when we did it um, in conjunction with our board retreat that year. So what I wanted to see is who else might be interested in going. So there'd be a, a couple of things to do. We would want to obviously compare and contrast how things have changed, how conditions have changed in three years. Um, there's been a lot of nightclubs that have closed. I think you will find it's a completely kind of different feel. But it also um, would help to inform what, um, if, if the bids, Sunset and Hollywood, were to consider funding a later security presence in the new bid, what would that look like? It'll give you a sense of what would they do at night? Would they drive? Would they walk? Are there some parts of the bid that um, would be more in need of this than others? So in addition to walking, I think we might also get some kind of a van and drive around and, and look at the areas that are going to become very neighborhood intensive, um, you know, down near East Town and Cam Camden and whatnot. Um, I want to involve Sunset people as well so we could be looking at different nooks and crannies of the Sunset bid. So the accommodation of walking and a combination of driving. But to do it right, you do it from midnight to three. So you can also see what happens at 2 a.m. and what happens on the street as people head to their cars or, or not, or head to the hookah lounges, which is, continues to be an issue. So I was looking at trying to do it on a, um, May 21st is a Saturday night. Then I realize now May 27th is Memorial Day weekend. So I was gonna see if a Saturday night would be better or a Friday night we could look at maybe doing it um, a Friday, perhaps the 17th of June. Um, so who, who would be interested in doing this? Joe? Yeah. Okay. Leslie, do it when Leslie comes back. Yeah, but I won't do it. Um, well, then we got we to plan around here. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alyssa. I was so horrified last time that I wasn't right. really seeing it. And Frank? Okay. He's kind of, okay. He's so what I'll do is I'll work with those who want to do it. There may be a couple people on the Sunset Board who want to do it as well. But if we can get, you know, six people, that would be good. And I'll work with your schedules. 